All right, family, welcome back to I Love Me, Me, Me. Today, I am showcasing my second radio interview, and I am just so happy to put this interview out here. I wanted to come here and bless you guys with this interview, and we are speaking about um, a marriage and interracial marriage and just other things, including, you know, that's all inclusive of relationships. So I hope that you enjoy it as much as I enjoy making it for you guys, and definitely stick around to the end. You will not regret it. And welcome to Conscious Vibe, your host, your brother, brother Melvin X. Graham. And with me today is the relationship coach, the high-level genius, the lovely Marshawn Barr. I just, I'm so happy to, for you to be here on Conscious Vibe again. And uh, so we can have this part two of our discussion, which you and I have both been trying to do for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Say hello to the Conscious Vibe listeners. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this conversation started. It's, it sounds like it's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be uh, a little bit of fireworks, I think. <laughs> you know, for the most part, we, uh, we side with one another on most of these uh, issues or, uh, or should I say realities that we face in mm -hmm. the black community in terms of men and women relationships. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be able to have a sister in front of me who I can have these discussions with. Because, you know, the, the had this discussion amongst the brothers, you know, we only can go but so deep. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not that much of a productive conversation when the opposite sex isn't there to represent that perspective of it. Okay. Indeed. <clears throat> but let's jump right into it because I know the Conscious Vibe listeners, you know, they, they want to know Oh, shoot, I'm pulling out money. I ain't pulling out the car. That's, that's right? for me. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> that money is for me. <laughs> no worries. But jumping right into it, um, when it comes to uh, marriage in general, you laid out some pretty good things. You laid out five reasons why, why um, arguing with your spouse yes, right? yes, yes. is a good thing. Why is that? Uh, you know what? Arguing with your spouse really is a good thing. Uh, number one, because you two can actually hear one another's opinion. You can hear each other out. Uh, another thing is that you're not afraid to speak to your partner. Um, you're not afraid to literally get your point across because some of these relationships out here, one of the parties in the relationship really, they have no opinion. So you don't want to be afraid. So it's good to actually not feel afraid to be able to express yourself when you're speaking with your partner. Um, another reason is really um, you guys are constantly learning from one another right. when you're having a, a, a disagreement or argument. I know that we use the word or the term argument or argue, period, but I personally don't like to use that word. I like to use the word communication because that's really what you guys should be doing is communicating with one another. So those are actually three of the five that, uh, that I spoke about. Okay. Now, on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. You got to deal with things on the surface level. Because okay. to a layman folk, when, you, when we talk about arguments or arguing in general, we're talking about something that's highly emotional, mm -hmm. right? Of course. So, I, so, so you, are you saying that it's good to let those, to release those emotions? Of course, because a, another thing that I didn't bring up is that it actually decreases the stress levels and, and the uh, the stress hormone, which is cortisol, which is a chemical within cortisol. our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So it decreases that level of, um, that stress level. Okay. And, and, and again, you feel heard, you feel validated as well, that you can get your point across. So yeah, it, it's actually a great thing to, to argue with your partner in the sense of being respectful, but being able to really communicate with your partner about why you didn't like a certain thing that they did, right? So. Understood. So, there's a lot of unspoken truths. Okay. Right? <laughs> and see, I have to say this loosely because I will not confirm nor deny that I was involved. Okay? Okay. I will not confirm <laughs> nor deny. <laughs> All right. But uh, getting right into it, like this one unspoken truth is being able to have a productive argument, it, should I say, adds to the relationship in terms of it not being stagnant. Is that true? Wait, let's say this question again. I'll repeat. So being in a relationship, being able to argue and, and, and you know, both sides be able to get their points across, mm -hmm. emotional or not, regardless, should I say saves the relationship or saves the marriage 
and keeps it from being stagnant. Do you believe that's true? Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. Okay. I believe that's absolutely true. Uh, true. Um, most people have a problem. Let, let me back up and say this. A lot of marriages actually fail for the simple fact that people have an issue with saying two words. Oh. I'm sorry. Apologies. Apolog apologizing. A lot of people let their ego get involved when it comes time to argue, a lot of people want to be right. They don't. They want to be right more than they want to be in the relationship. And, and, and being in a relationship, mm. you have to be more selfless while you're being in that relationship instead of selfish, right? So I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. <clears throat> okay, so it comes down to people not being able to say I'm sorry, mm -hmm. apologize to one another. Are there cases though? Where apologies are just not enough. An apology is not enough. Are there cases where that's the case? That's, a, that's kind of a tough one. But I will say that I don't think that there is a case where you apologizing is not enough. There might be some work behind that apology. Like you have to show and prove. You can't just say, I'm sorry. Right? There has to be some work behind it. But most people, because they let their ego get involved... They don't even say, I'm sorry. They don't even start the conversation because they think that they write. They think that they um, that their partner had no reason to bring up whatever it was that was said to them. They have an issue with saying, I'm sorry, because they want to be right. Yeah, apparently. And in a lot of cases, both uh, want to be right. All right. So moving, moving along. Mm -hmm. There's so much to unpack here. Right? Okay, all right. So much to discuss. <laughs> now, when it comes to being single, right? Because mm -hmm. when you're single a long time, for a long time, a long period of time. What's a long time? See, you go, you, uh, well, I, I know that's subjective, right? Okay, it's two years, five years? Three years. Okay, all right, throw a number. Say at the minimum, someone was uh, single for three years, they have to make certain adjustments, right, to, shall I say, to, to coexist in a relationship with, with the other person. So, what are some of the barriers you think that exist in terms of that initial build up to a relationship? When a person's been single for a long mm -hmm. time, uh, entering a relationship? Well, one of them I will say is trust. A lot of people have trust issues because of the previous relationship or several previous relationships. Um, another thing is people don't really know who they are when they get into these relationships. They just want to jump in. They they're thinking about the the fairy tale, right? They're they're um uh, thinking about the fairy tale and how that actually works out with them, how how it should be. And a lot of people don't think about the actual person that they're dating right now. They really do put them in a box on what should be happening instead of communicating and asking their partner like, um, how can we work this thing out? Forget, forget all of the outside forces. How can you and I come together and make this thing work out? Be respectful to one another and have a trusting relationship. Okay. So we can coexist. Understood. Now, I, now, this, is, now this is a barrier to trust in, uh, with this question I'm about to ask. Okay. <laughs> and I know we're going we're gonna to be on break soon, so I'm going to be real quick with it. Uh, so, uh, trust. Is, it, is, is the relationship recoverable when it comes to infidelity? It is, but it's going to take a whole lot of work to get that relationship back on <laughs> and even kill and to even make it better than where it was before. It, it really can't go back to the same relationship once inf infidelity enters into the relationship. It can be mended, but it's going to be a whole lot of work. It's going to take a whole lot of patience from both parties. But the person that did the, uh, the cheating, they are going to be the ones who really have to just... They, they got to let everything out on the line. Everything. Everything. Because if you, if you don't tell the person why, they actually, why you actually cheated, why, what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? That's a good point. I, I have to understand why you decided to walk out. Indeed. That's so right. we can try to remend this thing. Wow. It can work out, but it's going to take a lot of patience. That, that's the key point there, that it can work out, it takes patience, and it has to be rebuilt from scratch. Right? From scratch. Yep. Wow. Wow. On that note, so we're getting ready to go on break. want to thank the Conscious Vibe listeners out there. 
in the Facebook world for tuning in. Yes. Saying hello to everybody, family, friends, loved ones. Everybody. Hello. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. So uh, what I want to do is I'm changing my platform up a little bit. You know, I mean, I want to take on more diverse issues in terms of what we're dealing with in the black community. You know, I, I, I don't know. I've been on my soapbox on, on, on a lot of shall I say, topics that turns out to be the same. So through a lot of research and talking to people who are experts in certain fields, mm -hmm. I have more topics that are coming in and shows moving down the road. And I want to have you more involved as well. But on that note, folks, we're going to take our break and we'll be right back with Conscious Vibe. And we're back with Conscious Vibe. And once again, I have Sister Marshawn Barr right here with me. Yes, thank you so much for having me again. Oh, yeah. It's always an honor to have you on. Also, I want to give a shout out to my, uh, should I say, recurring guest co-host, uh, Sister Nikki. I tried to get you on by video, dear sister, but some odd reason, the internet here is not that great sometimes. But don't worry, I'm going to bring you back and I'll uh, keep you in the loop. And I also would like to have you and Sister Marshawn on the show together so y'all can double team me on relationship <laughs> issues. No. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, just jumping back into it because I know we have another part of the show to talk where we're okay. talking about interracial dating. Um, compatibility. This is, a, this is a very popular topic amongst us, black men and women. Um, has society in America, based upon economics, are we incompatible for one another, the black man and black woman, based upon economics? I'm going to have to definitely disagree with that. I, I don't think that we are. No, I don't think that we are. The reason I don't think that we are is because a lot of people put emphasis on their bank accounts. <laughs> they put emphasis on what each other is bringing into the household as far as financially, instead of putting emphasis on the entire relationship as a whole. They try to compartmentalize things and you can't do that with a relationship. So economics, that's something that we're doing to ourselves really. And, mm -hmm. and it really is about that ego that keeps creeping in there. <laughs> I agree. We had this discussion off, off air in terms of the ego and I agree wholeheartedly. However, I want to get I want to get to this point as yes, well. Yes, please. You're an educated black woman. Okay. okay. I am. <laughs> you have a Yeah, I know you are for, for <laughs> certain. But uh here we go. Now you have a woman who makes $200,000 a year. Mm -hmm. She has a master's degree. Mm -hmm. She has a circle of successful people. Mm -hmm. So she's out with her girlfriends. I can't, I'm not trying to make this a his or her, for her as good as her, but I just want to put this scenario out. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so, so she comes back, she's out one day at a Starbucks. I think that's a common place for, social, social, for socializing in Starbucks. Yeah, all right, mm -hmm. Starbucks. She meet this guy, right? Okay, he's, he's, he's a decent guy. He looks good or whatever. Right? Okay. So... Physicality alone, they're attractive, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the minute he opens his mouth, because mm. you know already, mm. when you meet somebody and they open their mouth, you can pretty much determine where they are on the educational spectrum. Okay. You can pretty much even determine sometimes, let me say sometimes, emphasis. We can even determine that, hey, we know where they are even on the economic ladder based upon how they present themselves to you. Okay. Correct? Mm hmm all right, so we, we're going to run the facts, the, the, the stats again. All right. She makes $200,000 a year. <laughs> she has a master's degree. Mm -hmm. She meets this brother mm -hmm. who, don't need, who, who, who has a GED. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. He flipped burgers at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But he has decent enough conversation to capture your attention. How do you make that compatible? From a black woman's perspective, how do you make that compatible? Okay. Uh, uh, am I ready? Yes, I'm done. <laughs> I, just to, I just want to get those, I just want to get those points. passionate right there. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, so, just... so any situation is possible to mm -hmm. be a loving, respectful relationship. Again, I have to emphasize this, that we put a whole lot on the economic status of 
our partner when it really should not be that way. I get it that society is really putting it out there to say that, you know, you make this, you make that, and, and you mention about how a person speaks and even approach you and everything else that's all involved, right? But some of the things that we have to think about, is this person just there because they want to do something else? Okay, so for instance, he works at Burger King, right? You said Burger King, right? It's okay, McDonald's. McDonald's. Clip okay, okay, okay fine, fine. So he works at McDonald's. She's basically, as far as economics, she's at the top of, top of the ladder. So did you give the brother enough uh, time to tell you that he is plan his business plan right maybe he wants to own three or four mcdonald's but he has to go in there work the floor first learn the business as much as he can on that side and then start moving up because his dream is to own four or five mcdonald's but you don't know that because only thing that you judged him off was this one scenario where he's actually at right then and there in his life I agree. But however, you do have to understand, <clears throat> am I right or wrong when I say this, we are who we associate with, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. So, with that being the case, you know, we have men and women, no matter, you have scenarios where people are, their circle is populated with folks who are deemed successful in this economic environment that we're in in America. Okay. So, you know, someone who's outside of that type of circle, you know, how are they even appealing? <laughs> okay, they're appeal as long as they are appealing to you because see, from what I hear, mm -hmm. we're bringing society into our relationships when it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. We we need to separate those things. And this is another reason why we have so many single people out here because we're letting society dictate who we should and should not date. I agree. I agree. And and that's an issue. That's an issue. So, yeah, that's what I'm ha that's where I'm have to leave it there. That's that's the big issue. We're thinking about what other people think about who we need to date, who we need to marry. If I bring him around my group of successful people, is he going to embarrass me or is she going to embarrass me? It shouldn't be anything like that, really. I agree. And if if he's if he's attracting you, if he's able to hold an intelligent conversation with you, why don't you think that that guy, just because he works at McDonald's, can hold an intelligent conversation with some of your group of friends? You mm -hmm. never know what he's going to bring to the table just because he works at McDonald's. Okay. Now, all right. So I know I got to move on to other questions, but okay. I, I got to throw this out. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I, I want to just want to get your perspective. <laughs> okay. So, can all right? Is it proper? Not even proper. Is it even safe to do to be with someone that is totally opposite of you, but they have other intangibles that you're interested in? Is it the right thing to do, or is, or is it even possible? See, I'm, I'm stumbling on words because I'm trying to make this make sense. But uh, is it okay to give someone knowing that they can change? Get with someone knowing, knowing that they can change? Get into a relationship with them, rather, if they can change. If you know they can change. Should, should they get into the relationship with, with the Correct. person if they know they can change? So it really just depends on if the person is willing to change. You can't just go into it hoping that the person is going to change. Have they expressed to you some things that they're trying to do? Did they kind of run by you their plan of action, not just words? What are they actively doing to get out of the situation that they're in? All right, I got you. Okay. Okay, fair enough. I understand. Because <laughs> these things become complex in terms of trying to explain. And no, but you did a great job there because you answered my question. Uh, so, moving on to my last point before we go into the interracial dating and marriage aspect. Okay. Of it. Okay, only they say, you know, according to marriage and divorce rates, only 45% of African American or black households mm -hmm. have a, are married. Have a mar or have a married couple in that household. Con in contrast or comparison to 70% Hispanic and 80% white people. So, you know, more than half of black households are single households. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is from your perspective? I think that it... Uh, <laughs> so I think that it has a, a lot to do with... Um, 
<sighs> okay, so it has a lot to do with the fact that we as black women have had to take on a lot of the roles being the, the breadwinner. We had to raise the children for whatever reason, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. The black man has decided or walked away from home, whatever happened where he's not there. So then she has to take on all of the roles of as far as the parent goes and do what she needs to do. And this is, this is not a, a story that people haven't heard before. You hear this all the time, how black women, she raised the family, she got all of these degrees, she's driving this, she's very successful, but all of that was a lot of sacrifice for her. Okay, and I, yeah, I told him. So, but that being the case, the sacrifices, the, um, all the hardships to take care of her household, mm -hmm. where does the, what role does the black man play then if he is indeed trying to build with her? Because she has that protective layer mm -hmm. already based upon the just survival in general. Has placed a protective shield around her. How does the black man in that case, in that, in that right, you know, get in? Okay. So, so the black man has to really let some of his ego go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he has to let some of his there ego go. go and... Um, really give the relationship a chance and also try to understand from the woman's point of view everything that she had to go through to get to where she's at. Now, can a relationship like this actually work out? Yes, it can. It happens all the time. But it really does take patience and um, especially the, very, the, the first couple years of any relationship mm -hmm. is a bit rocky. And it's mainly because we have two dominant people coming together and we both kind of be right all the time and we bumping heads and a lot of times we are not stepping back or like thinking about the situation and, and saying, you know what, I can see it from your point of view. I'm sorry that you even had to go through all of that stuff. Now, how can we work together? Gotcha. We don't have a lot of times we don't have these conversations. Because, you know, I don't want to really want to talk about the finances or how he can actually bring this to the table. I don't really don't want to let go or let down my guard because I had to do it by myself. I don't want them to take it away from me. We got a whole bunch of things going on in our head. And a lot of it is assumptions. And when you assume something, what do we do? Yeah. <laughs> so so, so we, got, we have to stop assuming that the other person doesn't want to work with us. Gotcha. But we have to have those conversations. These are tough conversations that we must have before we enter into a marriage. Because you, you have to know where your potential partner or potential spouse stands on these tough issues. I agree. I totally agree. Okay, so it's another layer. And then we go into interracial dating okay. and marriage. Um, can a marriage be sustained or last? When both the husband and wife are shrewd business people. When I say shrewd, successful mm -hmm. business folk. Mm -hmm. Can they coexist in a marriage if both of them are that way? So are both of them dominant or is you just talking about both their, their money? Group. Well, yeah, good point. That's a great point. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, um, they're both, are, I mean, from the, just their mentality. They're business minded. they business adventurous. Mm -hmm. Can they... Can they coexist in a marriage that way? Of, of course it can. So a lot of a lot of people, they have a tendency to bring their work home, okay. right? And so, okay, so let's just talk about the black women, for instance. We are in a lot of um, dominant, high-powered positions. And even when we're married, we have to learn how to turn that stuff off. Because as we talked about off-air, the, um, the role of the woman is to be submissive to her husband right and so when you when you get home from work ladies you have to learn how to turn that high poweredness that dominant i'm in control stuff off right, right. you got to turn it off it's, i'm not saying it's going to be easy to do but you have to turn it off and let the reins go back over to your husband and that's very hard for a lot of people to do and especially in our society of course we're both dominant so it's really hard for us to turn it off, especially as successful black women. And then we have to think about, well, I, I got here by myself. And some of us think, well, I got here by myself. I don't need you here, right? But that's actually detrimental to the relationship. That's detrimental to the black family. Understood. 
Wow. Ladies, we got to learn how to turn that dominant, powerful position off when you get to the household. Wow. And I would say to black people in general, and let me know if you agree with me, we have to be patient with one another and deal with each other where we are and build each other up. Yes, absolutely. I agree wholeheartedly. All right. So the more controversial part okay. of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to talk about interracial relationships. And I know a lot of people just based upon topics I usually talk about in my posts, they think I have a certain position, but they'd be surprised at what I actually think. Um, so of recent, you know, you have the Black Panther movie coming out mm -hmm. next month. Michael P. Jordan, um, it came out that he's not dating a sister and mm -hmm. he hasn't dated sisters. And I don't know. I don't know how long or when or whatever the case. But that's the that's the the scenario with him. And um a lot of black women were up in arms about it according to social media. Mm -hmm. And um you know they want a lot of black women were talking about uh boycotting the Black Panther movie over this thing. So I say all this to say, whether that's true or false, but I say all this to say why is it sex pressure when black people Black men or women, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to make this gender specific, but when black people in general decide to date outside their race, why is there so much pressure on that person? In your opinion? Well, I, I really do believe that it has a lot to do with our mentality, even going back to slavery and us being brought over here, and also what society puts in front of us as far as what's beautiful. Right. They're just now starting to get into black women being beautiful and with our natural hair and everything, right? So if even if you didn't think somebody outside of your race was attractive, but you're constantly being fed these messages subconsciously, you're going to start being attracted to those people, right? So Exactly. No, no, go. No, no, I said exactly. Oh. No, 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 no. no. I, I, it's okay. I lost my train of thought. Keep going. <laughs> I lost my okay. train of thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't throw right. those interjections. It's all right. It's all right. No, but, um, but also, you know, and then we throw these terms around like coon, sellout, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, you're, 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 you're a, uh, a white man in black flesh or you white in black flesh. Oh, wow. I've, I've heard, heard that one. Wow. I've heard them all. <laughs> I've seen, I've heard every single one. Are you indeed a coon mm -hmm. if you fall in love with a white person. I think, no, I, yeah, no, I think that that's so harsh. It's very harsh. <laughs> but, this, but this is what we do to one another. We throw each other out under the bus because love is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Love has not, shouldn't have nothing to do with the thinking of people around you. Shouldn't. Because however you feel internally is how you feel internally, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But reality is Whoever we decide to fall in love with, even in our own race, our our community, our perspective, respective communities, in terms of who we who populate our circle, mm -hmm. have a very very much have a great say into who we fall in love yeah, with. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, are you a coon if you date a white person? No, I, I okay. So I don't think that you're a coon. I think that a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of the, the pressures and I, idealizations that go along with dating outside of your race or specifically black on white. I think that a lot of it has to do with us as women feeling like you guys just don't want us anymore. Right. And because the black woman is the lowest one on the totem pole, according to the statistics, as far as being selected for, right. it's another <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, quote unquote smack in the face. I see. It's, a, it's another smack in the face. Um, I personally don't have an issue with interracial dating. I, and I'm speaking for a lot of black women, I could say I really don't think it's that they have an issue with the interracial dating, I think that it's that they have an issue when you hear like celebrities and these other people say how um, they just don't want to deal with black women anymore because of, you know, the way that they speak to their man and how they're disrespectful and all of this other stuff that comes out from uh, these celebrities and stuff. And then also when we're, when we're speaking about um, interracial dating, it becomes 
well, I don't, I don't have my black man yet. That's kind of, that's what it boils down to. I don't have my black man yet. So why does she end up getting, not necessarily my black man, but that's the terminology that we use. Why does she end up getting my black man? So even when I was in the dating scene, I also sometimes thought that, you know, well, where's my black man? Because really, I don't care if he's dating you, but I just want to date my own black man. So if a higher percentage of our black men are out there dating other women. And we know from statistics that black women do not or we're the lowest ones who date That's outside true. of our race, 100%. right? So if we're waiting or hoping or wishing or, or praying for a black man, but 50% of them have gone outside of the uh, race, then what am I left with? Because I really don't want to date anybody else. I only want to date you guys. And black men, we all know the black men are selected for. Everybody wants a piece of the black man. <laughs> they do. Well, yeah. Well, all right. No, keep uh, going. Uh, <laughs> Everybody wants a piece of the black man. And then because you guys know that, whether it's subconsciously or not, you guys know that so you can have the pick of your litter. And a lot of times we fall short when it comes time for you to marry. Okay, I agree. In most part, but I think the pick your litter part, I don't think it's that easy. Mm. I don't think it's that easy. Okay, sure. Because you have to understand where the economic bearings of, of, of black men in this country, you know, it does put us as, at a disadvantage when it comes to other men in their own, yeah, it's outside of our own race. Mm -hmm. It put us at a major disadvantage from an economic standpoint. And, and by and large, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, excuse me. Uh, women love security. Oh, we do. Yeah. And if a black man is not even not even secured in his own right, he lives with mom, he rooms with friends or whatever. And I saying that all black men that's their scenario, but a lot a large portion of us are in that scenario based upon just how the economic uh, realm is. We're you know that puts us at a major disadvantage. Mm -hmm. When you say a term like pick your litter, I just don't think it's that easy. Well, let's say. It seems like it is. <laughs> because seems it, it seems like it is. I will say that uh, black men are twice as likely to date and marry outside of the race than women, black women. And then, oh, no question. And then Asians are next, and then uh, Hispanics are third. So we're not the only ones that deal with interracial marriages and dating and everything, of but course. we are one of the ones that speak about it the of most. Because it matters. It only matters to us. Because it seems to me. Other races don't put such a, a put, should I say, pay that much attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have those who do, but I think by and large, black people, we pay way more attention to that than we do to each other, in my humble opinion. That's true. Yeah, I, I will have to agree with that. Yeah. You know, it's just an opinion. That's not saying, that's, not saying that that's a fact. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, but how do we mend those fences? How do we create that bridge? Now, I'm going to throw this out here because this is so true. But so many sexual harassment cases going on. How can a black man in this culture, how can a black man with all of this stuff going on, how can a black man approach a woman without being seen as aggressive? In this environment, with so much sexual harassment, so much, you know, because anything could be catcalling today, right? So. If, if I see you and you walk past me, I have and I and understand understand conscious vibe listeners. I'm a man <laughs> of etiquette. I don't do any of these things. So so when I say when I give these scenarios and I say I'm doing them, I'm speaking for the layman person. Okay, I'm a man of etiquette I, and and people can vouch for me. But no, seriously, if you know a man out in public, he sees the woman he likes, mm -hmm. and he's under his breath, he say, "Wow, damn, oh." See, this is catcalling today. Is what? that catcalling? Yes. Oh, that's what they're calling catcalling? That's I mean, a whistle. I mean, I'm mean, a whistle. Mm -hmm. Mommy, yo, mommy. Hey, let me get that number. Let me get those digits. Oh, you know my goodness. Saying? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> no, these, 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 these are not good behavior. This is not good practice. You know what I'm saying this is, this is what I've heard. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, even under the breath, though, but the wow and oh and, you know, like I said, but in this environment, right, this stuff is considered harassment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how can a man 
show interest in a woman without being come without being shall I say uh, cast as being aggressive. Mm-hmm. To me, just go old fashioned. Walk up to the lady. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is some advice right here. You know, walk up to the lady right. and say, "Hey, how you doing?" Put your hand out. I'm Melvin. What your name is, or what's your name? Mm-hmm. Let's have a conversation. Just get old fashioned with it. You don't have to do all of the cat calling and whistling and all of that stuff. You you really don't have to do that. Yeah, that's kind of harsh. Though. I don't know why I don't hear. the whistling part. That's kind of oh oh harsh. yeah that yeah that that's a mess. But <laughs> yeah, just get old school with it. We really put emphasis on all of this stuff for no reason, and we 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 think too deep about this stuff as well. Just go old fashioned with it. Most of the old fashioned moves. Women are looking for men to be more old fashioned with opening up car doors and, uh, you know, just just helping us out, making us feel as feminine as possible. So nobody really wants you to yell across the street, (laughs) even if they are considered fine, sexy, beautiful. But now you have everybody looking to see who this one person is now doing this to and you putting this person on the spot. I mean, but men do this stuff. I, I mean, the other day, you know, and here's and this is funny because I thought in San Diego, you know, I'm still, I, I mean, though I've been here over 10 years, mm-hmm. just about 10 years now, I'm still new here. Mm-hmm. But what I've seen guys do here shocked me because for a minute, I felt like I was back in Jamaica, Queens, New York. That's how I, that's how <laughs> I felt because, you know, here I am uh, coming out of a grocery store and this guy sees a woman, I'm assuming. Well, yeah, she was a woman. And he goes and says, yo, yo, like that. She Did she answer him? He walked over to her and they were talking for a long time. I, I Maybe they know each other. I doubt it because he wouldn't be that loud if you know her. So I'm thinking. But anyways, <laughs> something happened because he okay. was talking to her okay. for a long time. Well, maybe that maybe that's the type of guy that she wants to approach her. Interesting. So, so I also believe that Men that do this stuff, the cat calling, right. they know who they can do that with. Like, I don't get a lot of those. Like, I'm not saying that I never get them. But as far as, like, every time I go outside, I'm getting the yo, hey, mommy, all of this. No. I think it's the some of the way that I carry myself. And that is not something that that's I true. am uh, <laughs> going to entertain. Now, I, now that's something. I, I would have to agree wholeheartedly because... I believe how a woman conducts herself will determine how a man would approach That's her. That's right. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> and the same thing with men, you know. I mean, same thing. You know, if I if I conduct myself in a certain manner, a lot of women just ain't going to find me interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, like me, I'm changing my game. I'm going I'm to be in more suits. Like, this is how I'm Oh, shoot, man. Y'all better watch you know? out. <laughs> <laughs> just, do the, yeah, you know, do the mm-hmm. career and other stuff. But, uh this is how I like to dress. I'm mm-hmm. I'm about, I'm nearing forty, so you know, I just I just feel like I want to, should I say, change my whole style in general. But even with a certain type of style change, I just don't think certain types of women want to come at me that way as well. That's right. So you know, it's it's about etiquette. It's how you conduct yourself, and I and I agree with you on that. But back to the point, though, the interracial dating because we sort of. We went off on topic. Yeah, okay, we had a little sidebar <laughs> for a second. And that's cool because you know that's see that there's some sense the chemistry that we have with the show. No, um, when it comes to interracial dating, however, I mean the pressures that exist with it. Now, have you been in an interracial relationship before? I have, but it was it was uh, <laughs> it was many oh. years ago when I was young. I really don't count it because <laughs> I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, it did happen, but you know, I, yeah. So yes, I have been. <laughs> so what was the experience? It really for, for me. Okay, so let me just explain this to you. For me and my household, dating was a no go. So it was me kind of sneaking to see, sneaking to talk on the phone, and all of this stuff. So it really wasn't a real what I would consider a real relationship. So you didn't bring them home? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> okay, what do your friends think? My fr- <laughs> it's funny because my friend uh, introduced me to him. Interesting. Yeah. She was, she was uh, interracially dating a guy, and she introduced me to his cousin. Now, okay. Now, my conscious, some, some of our conscious vibe listeners know, especially family, but 
I'll put this out there. And I ain't going to go but so far back. Cause <laughs> okay. They're not going to incriminate me. I'm not going to incriminate myself on my own show. Okay, all I'm right. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but, uh, okay, my ex-wife, because I was married before, she was Mexican. Okay. And being married to a Mexican woman, we had uh, a lot of cultural differences yes. that led to us, you know, getting divorced or whatever. But even prior to that, I remember bringing my ex-wife home to D- Washington, D.C. That's where my family is, right? And, and you know, Chocolate City, yeah, right? Interesting, yeah. interesting. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were at a, sh- a shopping mall together, and, you know, we were holding hands in the shopping mall. You know, me, you know, melanated brother mm-hmm. with a fair-skinned Mexican woman. You know, a lot of sisters would just frown on me. I mean, I felt horrible. Like, it was a lot of pressure. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. And not that I was even ashamed mm-hmm. of who I was with, but it was the remarks. It was the responses. I, and that's why I had to ask that question. The pressure behind interracial marriages or dating, do you think we as a people are too harsh on it? And yeah, I, I do. I, I do think that we're too harsh on it. And a lot of it is because of our statistics that you brought up and how a lot of us are still single. And so, again, it's kind of a smack in the face that another black man has decided or chose someone else. Doesn't matter what what ethnicity. You didn't choose a sister. Mm. Okay. Mm. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's reality. That is. But here's the thing. What is luring black men and black women to date outside of their race? Do you think, is it something that we're doing to each other that's pushing us out to do this or, or what? Or it's just the individual and their taste? Right. Yeah, I actually do think that it's the individual and their taste, but also I think it's the uh, subliminal messages that we are receiving as well. Yeah, so so it might be the person's taste. It might be the person's social circle. You know, like we said, it depends, you know, as far as um, what you make or um the type of career that you have. So maybe your career, your employers or employees rather, depending on what side of the spectrum that you're on, what they look like, who you used to being around, what neighborhood that you moved into. There's a lot of things that go into play when you're um, thinking about picking or choosing a partner. And a lot of times we move away from our family or even the backbone of our uh, family relationships, which like Big Mama or something like that, right? right, right. We move away from that, and so we, we, we're, we're coming out to be our own person, and then we're getting into a lot of these careers where people don't look like us. Mm. And then we're yeah. going to office parties. You know, we're, we're doing a whole lot of things that maybe somebody that looked like me cannot relate to. It's not to say that you can't bring them along, right? But if I'm 100% or let's say 95% socializing and hanging out and all of this other things that I'm doing, even doing a lot of traveling, um, doing all of these things with people of, the, of a different race. And then I try to date or bring somebody in that looks like me and they have no idea what I'm talking about or even how to relate. And sometimes we get um, so insecure with ourselves that we don't even want to try to mm-hmm. learn. We just we just say, you know what? This is too much pressure for me. This is this is too much. I'd rather go talk to the person in my social circle versus going back to my community or old community, you know, to bring somebody else along. Wow, wow. Now that's that's heavy. Now. Well, I guess in some cases, because I've heard of cases where, uh, and I'm going to just say black men, where we have said, you know, I don't know if I want to, you know, get with Tamika because, you know, Becky just seems more appealing, you know, you know, Becky don't come from that wealth, you know what I mean? She, and I get one of those under my belt, you know, I, I don't have to struggle with anymore. You know, she my meal ticket out the gutter, you know what I'm saying? So. I can't, I can't go with Tamika because, you know, Becky, she, she got it going on. She got her own home. She got four cars. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, I give her Becky. She got more to offer me. You know, that's what I call a, 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 an investment right there. Mm-hmm. But see, and, and I, I throw that out there because I've heard brothers talk this way. Do we, do, do we not even see, you know, our, each other as being worthy of investing our time and energy into? 
You think that's a problem with interracial dating as well? I, I think that that is a problem, but let me back up. Oh, you can tell you going to get <laughs> let me, me Let me back up. Okay. <laughs> For the brother in this scenario, is he bringing anything to the table? Ooh. For Becky to choose him, for because he making it come up and sound like it don't sound like he loved Becky. It don't sound like he really want to get to know Becky. It sound like he only want to be with Becky because of the finances. And brother, hey, why aren't your finances on point? Because you're supposed to be the provider, right? Of course. So now you about to go into a scenario where you have to feel like you can be subservient to now Becky. Becky might handle it a little bit better as opposed to a black woman. You're right. But (laughs) what are you bringing to the table, brother? That's true. Other than being sexy. And let's just go for it. Other than the sex that you bring to the table. Right. What else (laughs) are you bringing to the table? Now, here's another part. And and see, these are our cliches that goes around. Here's another one. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to get that white girl. You know what I'm saying? You know, because these, uh, these black women, you know, shh, I mean, I mean, damn, every time we go go to the restaurant, I got to swipe my car. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she demands so much of me, you know. I mean, damn, can a, can a, can a brother get a cooked meal when he come home? You know, can I have my shirt ironed? You know what I mean? Can I have my back massaged? I mean, geez, these, these Becky willing to go the extra mile. This is, what, this is the cliches that are going on. Okay, so again, is brother, all of the stuff that he <laughs> wants <laughs> the woman, the black woman specifically right. to bring to right, the table, right, right, is right. he willing to give back rubs himself? Is he willing to cook himself? Because, see, nowadays, sisters and brothers, we all are working. I agree. Most women are not at the house just rearing the children or taking care of the house. We're doing all this working and all these hours just like you are, Right? And then I got to come home and take care of the entire household because a lot of our brothers, yes, my black men out here, a lot of y'all still are not helping out with the housework. Mm. A lot of y'all want y'all women to do everything. Oh. Plus, cook, rear, sex, on point. Everything's supposed to be on point. Y'all never take into consideration, and obviously I'm not saying every brother out here, but most of us uh, get so spoiled or we always feel like we have to be in these old roles, mm-hmm. right? We, we want to take them on when it's uh, uh, beneficial to us. And so he is only going, again, he only going for Becky because he's making a financial come up. He's only going to Becky because she's willing to rub his back or make a sandwich or have a cooked meal. Now, how come you and the sister can't get in the kitchen together and have some family bond in town and cook together? Why does she always have to have your plate made when you come through the door? I agree. How come y'all can't do it together? No, I, that's, y'all, y'all both tired. That's a great point. That that's that is an awesome and amazing point because we it should be about together. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, the whole point of being married in or in a relationship is to be able to share your lives together. Mm-hmm. But for some odd reason, there's a disconnect there between the black man and the black woman. I don't know if it's societal in terms of economics. You know, I always take it back to economics because ultimately we live in a capitalist society and mm-hmm. money matters to it a, a large degree. However, between the black man and the black woman, we shouldn't use that as a barometer to determine whether or not a person is worthy of being in love with. And That's I, true. And this is what kills me about us. But uh, for my conscious Rob listeners, I was just speaking in cliche there. I'm not saying I do these things. <laughs> so, okay. Make it so clear. Make it clear. I got to make sure we're clear here. <laughs> but before we close the show, I got to ask this question because I've seen this across my timeline, not only on uh, Facebook, but on Twitter mm-hmm. and also on Instagram. Um, what do you think about this? I call it a phenomenon because of the money that's been tied into it. These sex dolls that men have access to now. <laughs> Is this the replacement for loneliness? This is an abomination is what this is. Seriously. Like, I don't, it might be a replacement for some people. Because somebody, some people, so somebody definitely is going to buy into this and say that this is their woman. But really, I feel that it has a lot to do with the whole control factor. 
I can still have sex with you, but I ain't got to listen to you talk back or I don't have to listen to you complain. I can pretty much do with you what I will. And now they have the, are you talking about the talking ones too? I seen something about they a talk? talking one. I, didn't I seen know that. something about a talking I one. I didn't uh, know that. Actually, just know. today. Wow. So it's just like, <sighs> I just know that I just know that the doll itself exists. I didn't know that yes. they talk. The doll ex- itself crazy. exists. I even seen one where it's just the bottom half of the woman. It's just no nobody, nothing. So uh, uh, some people are gonna absolutely buy into it, but it really is a lonely existence because at the end of the day, yes, you you can physically sleep with this now doll, but there is no emotion there. Wow. There are no late night can't talks. Be. Can't be. There are no late night cuddles or, you know, where the black woman is not rubbing your back. Becky not rubbing your back. The doll sure can't rub your back. The doll surely cannot make this sandwich for you. The doll surely cannot help you along the way or, you know, if you need help with um, building up your business or just words of encouragement. Yeah, that matters. Words of encouragement would, would could take a person a long way. Mm-hmm. No, there's no question about it. But you know, I had a coworker, had a coworker, or mm-hmm. worked with, who talked about this very topic. This is before it became such a big discussion point. Okay. This is probably about about three months ago, and one of the things he was saying, you know, I mean, it was crazy the stuff he was saying. I had to laugh because I can't believe this guy would say this type of stuff. Okay. He was like, <laughs> well, I was because he said, have you heard about the new sex dolls or whatever? I said, no, man, I don't get into all that. He said, but I'm going to tell you something, man. I think it's a good thing. I was like, okay, well, why? So that's my first, mm-hmm. first question was why? He goes and says, well, think about it. You know, with all this sexual harassment stuff, I mean, if you even look at a woman, that's sexual harassment. I mean, hell, I got a, I got a, uh, you know, a, a, uh, a doll or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what he called it. He had a, a term for it. You know, at least with that, you know, I don't have to go to jail. I don't have to worry about child support. I don't have to worry about, you know, someone uh, talking about everything that I do. I, he said it's freedom. What did I just say? That's what he said. That's what, this is what he said. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I was like, really? You know? Wait, but, I'm sorry. I cut you off. Freedom in what sense? What freedom in what sense? I don't sense? know what he meant by it. That's what he said. I don't know. I, I, I believe that, you know, me personally, now I get into my personal beliefs. I believe that being with a woman and having someone who I can share things with, and whether it's my problems or whether it's just getting sound advice, because obviously if you're living with someone, you want to be able to defer to them in terms of getting advice. Mm-hmm. To me, that mm-hmm. is freedom. Yes. That is freedom. Yes, it is. Because to be able to have to deal with your own thoughts without anyone to defer to, that is suppression in a way. Mm-hmm. So to have someone to release to in terms of getting advice from, that to me is a sense of freedom. It is. And, and holding all of that in can lead to depression as well. Exactly. So suppression and depression. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But before we go, let's have you, because uh, you, you're an amazing, here's, here's, here's what I have to say about you. You're an amazing woman, highly intelligent. Your mom, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. have, pre- you pretty much have your future laid out for you in terms of where you want to go, yes. your trajectory. Mm-hmm. And I, and you know, and I admire you for it. You're a great woman, and I love to have you back. Absolutely, yeah, I would always. love to come back. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this is always good times for me. Good yeah. times for me. Good times for us. I love the chemistry and everything. So yeah, indeed. Well, you heard it here, folks. Our relationship coach, Sister Marshawn Barr. Please follow her on Facebook. Uh, actually, subscribe to her YouTube page. Absolutely, sister has has a wealth of knowledge. You know, on on a lot of different things. You do, do you get medical advice as well? I do not. I know you medical. In the medical field. <laughs> I am in the medical field, but no, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> you need to open up shop in every single section. Man. No, I'm messing around. But no, yes. But please uh, get in contact with the sister. A lot of us out here. Maybe we need, you know, just a little bit of coaching. I know I need coaching. Mm-hmm. I tell you. I, I would mean, love to help you out, mother, Brother Melvin. <laughs> ah, I really appreciate that. No, but uh, we all need coaching. You know, we all need effective ways of how to communicate. Mm-hmm. And you can, ne- I mean, this is a, a forever growing platform that constantly ev- evolves. So, you know, learning how to communicate better is a great thing. It's a great thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Indeed. Well, folks, that's the, another show for Conscious Vibe. Uh, thank you to all my listeners, and we'll be back next week. 
All right, family, did you get blessed by all of that information that I was able to share with you guys today? You know here, I love me, me, me. I love sharing all of the tips to bring in healthy, happy, oh, creating healthy, happy, romantic relationships, right? So you know that that's what I do here. I supply you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to create those types of relationships because I want to help with decreasing that divorce rate while simultaneously increasing the marriage rate. I will see you in another video. Two finger salute.